Okay, so this is E2900 uh, week 5 lecture 2. Today we're going to talk about synthesis of logic functions, particularly what is called as a MUX or multiplexer. So multiplexer abbreviated MUX is, could be called as or defined as many to one. So it is basically a selector uh, component, if you will. That is, here is the schematic symbol for a MUX. Oh, let me, all right, there. Just made my position more comfortable for writing. So number one, number two, the schematic symbol is basically something like this, okay? So you have what is called, let's say you have N select bits, okay, abbreviated S. So it's a bus. Then you will have 2 to the n inputs. Yes, for example, let's say you have one select bit, then you can select two possibilities. Yes, if you have two select bits, you can select four possibilities. So this is m bits wide. Obviously, the number of uh, the width of the input, the bus width, need not be equal to the width of the select bits. So here is x0. all the way to x 2 to the n minus 1, okay? So again, this is m bits wide. Just be a little clear there. So there's your m, okay? And then you have your output y, which is also m bits wide. So here is a, a, the schematic symbol for the mux and the general relationship between the select bits, the number of inputs, and there's only one output. So let's look at some examples. So the simplest case, example one, is what is called as a two to one mux. So in this case, let's do one bit wide. Okay? And then for the four to one mux, we'll do like uh, four bits, well, eight bits wide, whatever. Right? So first, let's do look at this. So here's a select bit. Here is x0. Here is x1. Okay. And then this is y. So the function table, so what I'll do is I'll write out a function table and then I'll write out the truth table. So now you, you can see, excuse me, why, uh, so you can see why we use a function table. So when s is 0, y is x0, and when s is 1, y is x1. That describes the functionality of the circuit. If you want to write out a truth table, you have to give both, the, I mean, you have to write out the number, all the inputs and the outputs. So in this case, you actually have three inputs, yeah? So right there. So now you can see why, and notice I've made select the most significant bit for obvious reasons, because in that case, I can easily choose, that is if S is zero, I know the output is equal to X zero. If S is one, the output is equal to X one. Okay, so I can easily write the logic function uh, in, and also, I can, for writing out the logic function expression, I can use the truth table and then minimize using, let's say, Carnot map. But using the function table, you can easily see that y is equal to x0 when s is 0, or it's equal to x1 when s is 1. And I recommend that you actually, for practice, derive this from the truth table. Notice you need a three variable k map, so it should not be hard for you to draw a three variable k-map based on our discussions of the k-map from the last lecture, but it'll be a good practice to derive this in the minimal form, okay, which I got from the function table. Now in VHDL, so you can, this is, you, this can be implemented easily in structural VHDL, but one of the things we you need to understand is in behavioral VHDL, you used a selected signal assignment. Um, selected signal assignment can be used to infer, that is, a synthesis will infer a multiplexer. Okay? So in behavioral VHDL, 
So it'll be with S select Y is X zero when zero. Again, uh, let me do it this way using a comment. Assume S is of type, remember from lab, we discussed we use standard logic. There's a comma there, X one when others. Of course, as we saw in lab, this with statement, or then it's called the selected signal assignment, can be used. So here's the selected signal assignment. Can be used also to, as we saw in lab, to infer decoders. But for now, let's look at it in terms of the MUX. Okay, so there it is. And if you remember from lab, I showed you the RTL view, and you did see MUXs for the seven segment decoder. You saw this symbol. So bottom line is the selected signal assignment infers a multiplex. So let's do some more examples. In the sense, here is example two. Uh, so what we're going to do is let's do a three-bit wide four to one mux. So what that means is we want to draw this schematically. So what you have is two select bits. S one is zero, right? And then you have x0, x1, x2, x3. You have four possible choices, but each of these lines is three bit wide. Okay. And notice now the function table is very easy to write. The truth table actually is going to involve one, two, and then you have three possible inputs here. So if you want to write out the full truth table, that should be one, two plus three times four, which is 12, like technically 14 columns wide and you have three outputs. However, the function table is easy to describe. So let's do S1 is zero, Y, so when it's zero, zero, Y is X zero, when it's 0, 1, y is x1. When it's 1, 0, it's x2. And when it's 1, 1, and x3. So from here, just like the last example, the 2 to 1 mux, you can very easily write the output expression in terms of s1 is 0. It's So I'm, I'll just write out one term. y is when it's, when it's 0, 0. We're going to write sum of products. It's x0. Or well, let me write out another term. Uh, 0, 1, it's x1 plus the other terms, and you should fill this in. There are two other terms, okay? But the bottom line is, in behavioral VHDL, again, assuming uh, there are no type mismatches, you have with, uh, I'm going to concatenate, just for the heck of it, S1 and S0, select y is x0 zero when 0 and 0 comma x1 when 0 and 1 x2 when 1 concatenated with 0 I don't want to say and I'm sorry x3 when others remember the type standard logic has other types besides 0, 1, example, high impedance. So that's why I use the others clause to take care of everything, every other possible case. But this is, for us, just 1, 1, point number 1. Point number 2 is we are assuming, again, there are no type mismatches. So the size of y is 3 bits, 3 standard logic, is a standard logic vector from 2 down to 0. So is x0, x1, x2, x3. Okay? Now, uh, let's look at another example of how we can use multiplier, multipliers, multiplexers to synthesize logic functions. Let me pause the lecture and go look up the problem, and then we will continue. Oops, don't want that. Let's pause. Okay, continuing. So I found this very nice problem from the Ada Kapanu HKN uh, exam archive from my alma mater. So it's from the 1992 CS150, the digital logic design course. 
this question where we are asked to implement the following function below shown via kmap using only an 8 to 1 mux using a c and d as control inputs assume complements are available so since we have an 8 to so before we get started let's look at the kmap now notice that this notation which uh, i didn't mention in last lecture when we discussed kmaps but it's not hard to understand so they have uh, labeled those variables that don't uh, that are one and don't change as you move from a column or as you move across adjacent columns or as you move across adjacent rows but anyway, it's very simple notation now the, that's the problem is we want to implement an 8 to 1 mux using three control inputs it makes sense you have three inputs that will give us eight possible choices so there are many ways to approach this problem the way I, what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually write out the truth table because it's much easier uh, in this sorry it's I won't, ah, I can't draw a straight line on this tablet. So let's try again. Yeah, straight enough, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to hopefully uh, make mistakes from translating the, uh, to the schematic from the truth table instead of from the K-map because if our select, if our control inputs are ACD, so what I want is basically the first three of the most significant columns like these to be ACD. And then I want to get B, and then let's look at my output Y, okay? So then let's look at the 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, so then we're to 3, 4. Ah, no wonder. So let's try this again. What I, the mistake I made was I was looking at the Carnot map as I was doing the truth table. Let's not do that. Uh, let me just write out the 16 possible numbers. One, I don't want to pause the lecture. Uh, zero, one, zero, 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 because uh, I just want to co cover how I'm going to convert the K map into the truth table pretty carefully. Uh, you just gotta be careful. That's all. It's not rocket science or anything. That's very difficult. There, much straighter. Zero one one zero zero one one one. My next four. I have two more sets of four. One zero 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 one zero zero one one zero one zero one zero one one. Uh, let me move this up. Something else moved up, yeah, right there. And let me save this so we don't lose anything there. And then one 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 zero zero one one zero one 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 zero one 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 one. Yay! All right. So now notice you have here when ACD is zero one, so you have eight possibilities, right? One, two, three, four five six seven and eight so let's look at now each possibility in the sense we have to see when acd is zero and that's zero 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 correct and then here zero uh, let's see a is zero c is zero d is zero that's over he here right mm, make sense so in that case what we get is let me do this let me use a different color So these two cases are here and here, okay? And that's why I rewrote this as a truth table so I can easily read off from the K-map what my outputs are. I rewrote this as a truth table with ACD as the most significant bits. Hopefully you understand that if I try to write this truth table in the order of the variables in the K-map, that is A, B, C, D, it becomes much more difficult to see how the select bits are used to transfer the input to the output. So in this case, it's zero, zero, okay? So now that you understand that, I can pause the lecture, fill out the truth table entries, okay? Actually, let me not pause it like I said before. Let me just, let's just do it. 
So you want zero, so zero, zero, 001. So let's see, zero, zero, 001, zero, zero, 001. And you can see there's a pattern here, right? So let me actually use a different color. I don't know how many. Oh, let's use these two, okay? So this is, whoops, uh oh. Looks like mine did crash. So hopefully, yeah. Let me actually pause the lecture, finish, uh, finish it up, and then we'll continue. Okay, continuing. So I've filled out the truth table. Uh, so let's look at now from the orange, in the sense ACD is 010010. That is 010010, and you can see there's still zero. However, when I go to 011, 011, and 011 here, I get 01. So that's right there. Okay, notice that now this is equal to B. And if I keep going down here, I'm going to get Y as B complement. That is when ACD is 101, which is 101, 101. I get 10, okay? So here, the output is going to be the complement of the input, and that's exactly what the question says. Assume complements are available. Therefore, we can now write out what the multiplexer solution is. So here it is. I'll do it on the same page. Okay. So I'm going to have, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm going to have eight inputs uh, uh, and three select bits because select bits are technically inputs in terms of Boolean algebra, but in terms of the multiplexer, they are called select bits. Okay, so here is, let me label the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So for 0, it's 0. For 1, it's 0. For I mean, one of the select bits. For 2, it's 0. For 3, it's equal to B. For 4, it's equal to 0. For 5, it's equal to B complement. Uh, for 6, it's equal to B complement. And for 7, it's equal to 1 on VCC. So here is the solution. Okay. So again, very intuitive and a nice problem. Uh, not a difficult problem at all by any means. And that's about it for today's lecture in terms of multiplexers. So let's just look at another, uh, quickly look at, another uh, component, if you will, which are decoders, okay? So decoders, uh, like the name says, it decodes as an example. Uh, so it converts, you could say, uh, used to convert from uh, one, uh, let's see, representation to another so it decodes it in the sense I mean the inverse of a decoder is an encoder but as an example a seven segment oops what the heck am I writing a seven segment decoder is a classic example in the sense that you have a seven segment hex display okay so here is the seven segment display so this is bit 6, bit 5. This is a standard numbering. I know we saw this in lab, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. But again, this is very standard. And sometimes there's a decimal point here that can be controlled. However, the point is, let's say you want to display numbers uh, 0 through F, which you can with one uh, seven-segment display. So this is the called as a seven-segment display. Okay. And here is our decoder. But if you want hex number 0 through F, you need 4 bits in. Okay. So here is 4 bits. So let's call this uh, binary in. So you're getting a binary number in, unsigned binary. But the output is now going to be 7 bits. Okay. So let's call this hex out. Okay. So if you want a function table, Here it is. I'll just draw right out. So let's call this x3, x2, x1, x0. But now you can see this is hex out 6, hex out 5, all the way to hex out 0. The function table is uh, pretty involved in the sense, let's say you want to display a 0. So we'll assume this is active low. That is, if you write a 0, 
the LED lights up. If you write a one, it turns off. It, this is to keep it consistent with the uh, seven segment display, with the active low seven segment displays on the DE1 board. But anyways, if you want to display a zero, you want to turn off the middle segment and turn on the rest, okay? So you can see the function table is pretty involved in the sense if you go down to one, 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 you want to display an F, right? So you turn six on, five on, and then you turn four on, you turn three off, you turn two off, you turn one off, you turn zero on. So that'll give us an F, okay? But basically, this is pretty simple to do in behavioral VHDL, and I recommend that you finish this up in the sense I can do with binary in. So basically, this is my binary in. I could have done just like hex out. I could have done binary in 4, binary in 2, binary in 1, binary in 0, but I don't want to do that because it's too much writing. With binary in, select, so let's do hex out. So it's going to be 1 concatenated with 0, with 0, all the way up to bit 0. But however, like I did in lab, let's do this in a much more elegant way. That is, let's declare a signal called hex out, which is standard logic vector, which is 8 bits. So we can use hex notation okay, down to 0. Dot, dot, dot. And then in your architecture body, what you can do is we can say with um, binary in, okay, select hex out. So if you want to implement this on the D1 board, we could do something, assuming you imported pin assignments, you can do something like binary in is, whoops, ooh, Reminds me, I have to save. So we can concatenate the switches. Right? Actually, you don't need to concatenate it because they're already of type standard logic vector. So this is 3 down to 0, right? Again, this is all for the DE1 board. Okay. Uh, so you have 4 bits in. So with binary in, hex out will be, for example, um, so we need only 7 bits in the sense of, our, let's say you're using hex 0. So this is dot, 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 finish this up. But then this will be hex out, 6 down to 0. Okay. So the most significant bit is a don't care. So for consistency's sake, we'll assume that it's always 0. In that case, what it will be is your, so this will be on, uh, so this will be off, everything else will be on for displaying 7. So in that case, hex out for 0 is going to be 4, 0, when this fellow is, so it's 4 bits, I can again use hexadecimal, x, 0, okay? So and then, so finish this up. But there it is, a 7-segment decoder, easily described in behavioral VHDL. Okay, that's about it for this lecture. Uh, so next lecture, there is no, not going to be a video online because it's going to be a review for your first exam. But basically, where we are getting at in this course now is trying to, is understanding Boolean algebra and then at the high level, uh, specifying components such as multiplexers and decoders using behavioral VHDL. But again, you should be comfortable enough with Boolean algebra so you can move between the binary representation to behavioral VHDL uh, in a matter of speaking very quickly. And I think my journal writer just crashed. So it's um, kind of like perfect timing. But yeah, uh, that's about it. So again, uh, please practice and I will see you after next lecture. Uh, the, well, after the next lecture, the review lecture, you have an exam for those of you in 2900 and then after that we'll continue the course. All right, see you then.